welcome, welcome to the channel, welcome to Carting One. Um, so, what's the project? What have I got myself into this time? Um, I think we've obviously got to talk about the pandemic situation, how that's affected us, how it's affected me. Um, obviously, I had a couple of big projects this year, the budget cart challenge and then the um, the twin cart build with, with Jack Dex. And unfortunately, for, from a financial point of view, it's and, and a sort of logistical point of view, it's not I'm not going to be able to complete those challenges this year, at least um, financially with the pandemic, I've had to sell a few things the, the van's gone. I've got the transport. So I'm sort of stuck at home a little bit for the for the foreseeable future. So um, I've had to reevaluate what I want to do going forward. And I've come to the conclusion that rather than doing something sensible, I've got to do something a bit a uh, bit more stupid. So here you are. You would have seen the title. Um, that's not clickbait. Uh, my my objective, my my new goal for for this me for next year, um, is to design and build a cart chassis from scratch. Yes, from scratch. Uh, I know that might be an alien concept for a lot of guys that maybe have got into karting in the last ten to fifteen years, but um, I've sort of felt that as a cart cart person I guess um, we sort of uh, we buy the products and we buy the chassis and we'll go racing and it sort of dawned on me that we're in a kind of unique situation in karting where we can build our own carts if we really want to as long as they adhere to the regulations there's nothing that stipulates someone can't build their own cart right and um, outside of CIK homologated classes, um, where, where you are required to build a certain number of carts, but um, in classes like Rotax and Senior X, they here, all you have to do is build a cart that adheres to Motorsport UK regulations, right? So it has to be constructed in a, in a safe manner and fulfill all the criteria with regard to dimensions and construction. So, yeah, that's the plan. Um, what is the inspiration behind it? Um, like, I think the first thing that triggered in my, my mind was when I was doing all the stuff for Morecambe, that video, uh, the World Cup, you sort of, I spent a lot of time on the British Historic Cart Club page and on Facebook, and every few weeks there'll be a new sort of, a, well, a new, a, a new post that says, does anyone remember this cart? Or, does anyone remember this car? Someone will come on and go, yeah, I remember that car. It was built by whoever to race in this race. And these kind of stories and narratives, and it's like a culture of karting that kind of feels lost to a certain extent. Um, that I feel more naturally inclined towards than, than kind of what we have now, where effectively, you know, we've got a pseudo, pseudo arrive and drive model where you buy a, an OTK from a team uh, who put a sticker kit on it and an X30 or a Rotax and they run it and like, that's fine if you like doing that but for me there's a kind of there's a there's not enough to it it seems just not a million miles away from doing Club 100 so um, I'm more in tune with that sort of culture and I mean one example is um, Peter Burgess who built a sort of laydown cart for the Snetterton Six Hours, which was a cart race in the late sixties or early seventies, and I don't know, it just sort of people used to build their own carts. There wasn't this sort of infrastructure of, um, you know, your, your, your big factories in North Italy effectively monopolising most of the carts sold around the world. People in this country, because this is my reference point, would quite often build their own carts and go race them and I kind of think there's such an energy to that that you can't replicate elsewhere and, and let me explain like if you're racing and you're racing a Tony cart built built by OTK and you're, you're racing an X30 sure it might be rebuilt by a tuner or a tuner but they're not really tuning the engine but and when when that cart wins you know that's a victory for Tony cart they don't really care um if you win a a British meeting all that much and then they're, in, they're interested in what they're doing but as a unit 
you know, you've got the driver might celebrate the team, but when there's a person building the engines, when there's a person building the chassis, there's that extra element of emotion, you know. Another person in the equation that's actually uh, being victorious or losing and, and, and feeling that emotion. So it's kind of, there's like a layer to this concept of having multiple manufacturers and, and people building their own stuff that I just don't think you get elsewhere. And, and of course, if you race the way you race, I've got nothing against that. I'm trying to explain my inner motivations. But it's a it's a culture within karting like, that I, I would like to celebrate a little bit more and encourage others and inspire others to try the same thing. Like, to me, it's kind of extraordinary that we have this opportunity in kart racing to effectively build and manufacture our own cars. Right? Like I said, there's nothing in the, the Motorsport UK regulations for chassis that says you can't build your own car. It's, it's, you, you just have to build it to the standards required. And it kind of reminds me of um, F1 in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Sure, like in the 50s you had Mercedes and Ferrari, but when the garageistas come in, you had guys literally building their own F1 cars and going racing. There's a, there's a story about a guy called, I think it's Peter Conyu, and he started his own F1 team. And he literally sort of, I think he built, he designed cars for, I'm not sure if it was Brabham, BRM or someone like that, but he ended up uh, wanting to build his own car. And it's like in a garage in, in northwest London, he designed and built his own car with his mates. And I think he bought a, a Cosworth, is it a DFE? I can't remember if it was a DFE. But he, he, he got one from McLaren and there was, but it was just a small bunch of guys who built a car and went racing. And we have that opportunity in karting right now to do that. And we all end up buying chassis from OTK, Birrell, um, and maybe a couple of other manufacturers. But really, if you're buying a car that isn't an OTK or Birrell brand, you're probably buying a wild car or you're probably buying a Paralin. So I would like, it, and for me, that opportunity to build your own stuff, be encouraged a bit more. Because I think it is part of our culture of, of car people, I guess, that binds us together and... It's, very, it's a very uh, obscure point that I'm trying to make, but I'm just trying to explain my motivation so you really understand the project before I get stuck in. I will get into the technicalities in a minute. Um, but you know me, I like to talk. So, yes, I think part of it is trying to embrace kind culture and encourage kind culture so that we aren't constantly having uh, people from outside of kart racing, particularly car racing people, talk on behalf of of kart racing. I, I get very tired of seeing uh, videos from a car. Effectively, I don't, I don't, there's not a differentiation between kart and kart people, essentially, but people that are more rooted in car racing culture, saying stuff about karting that's demonstrably not true. You know, you might get you know, someone on Sky Sports recently was just, just threw out a comment like, you know, karting costs 50 to 100 grand a year. And it's like, no, no. If you spoke to a person that actually does kart racing, you'll know that's just complete baloney. If you actually look at the big picture. Yeah, sure, one small parts of it cost a lot of money, but other, most of it doesn't. So I just I want to uh, inspire, especially young people that, you know, who, who often will, will leave karts quite early, but there's a lot of young people that I, I want to know that you have the opportunity to literally manufacture your own car. You know, you see Formula Student and, you know, they're doing slalom competitions and 0 to 60 runs and stuff like that. And I, I think, you know, that group of people could get together and build their own car and go race it and actually race it against really highly competitive teams. So, and I think that would be a, an awesome thing to see is to see more people sort of manufacture their own, their own car, especially young people. Like I said, I think that's where my my goal is because I'm not an engineer and the lesson here is if I can do it like anybody can like I, I mean that I mean you, you know I, uh, even just the first layer of trying to understand steel tubing and that as my brain frazzled so if I can manage to get something that works you know so can you so at this project I, I don't want to end up doing it on my own and being the only person at the end of this process um so what what I what I'd have seen so for those who have built their own car because I know you're out there will come to me and you, you'll say um, 
you know, I've done it, I've done it, and that's fantastic. Like I've seen a few guys on Facebook who've sort of fabricated their own car, posted a few pictures. Um, so hopefully I can talk to you. Hopefully you can get in touch and give me some advice because I, I will need it. There's a there's a particular there's like a subculture of fabrication YouTube channels as well, and you know a lot of people have sort of built a car from scratch, and I think that's it's very good for me to see because it sort of shows the basic principles of it. There's one guy I think used a Tony Car Extreme CAD model, and he built a car from that. But they end up manufacturing the car, but it's not to be used in a competitive situation. So there's certain parts of the build that you'd go, okay, that's not realistic. You can't have your pedals like that. You need a proper floor tray, and this this kind of looks right, but you've put this weird lump four stroke on it, and that sort of like what I'm talking about is building a car for competitive use. So. Um, that's kind of, I, I, you know, I think there's a market out there for karting that we've kind of not realised there, which is sort of fabrication market. These these YouTube channels get huge views, and I think it's good if we it, it, you, huge views of people building carts, but they don't end up taking them to the kart track. They'll they'll take them around a road, I and mean, I want to say no. You can build a kart and actually go race it and show off what we do as a as a sport um and, and obviously now i know i'm going on multiple tangents here the reason is because i haven't got any equipment yet so i have to do an announcement video that's sort of sufficiently long enough um to to uh warrant your attention um i just wanted to say that like my, my motivation is is always fundamentally karting culture and I'm kind of seeing the direction karting's going in, and it's a very single make, monolithic kind of beast that it's turning into. And I, I, I can understand why it's going that way, particularly because the market of seniors is declining. You know, the percentage of, of carters that are actually in the senior bracket is, I think, is declining, as opposed to sort of cadets and juniors where parents are the the spending power and when parents are the spending power the priorities are slightly different to the rest of us so um i can see that single make thing is, is being pushed there's a few guys who run teams that do go against the curve um import a different chassis have close relationships with the chassis manufacturers and try developments and that's kind of like for me that's more racing it's got more racing vibe where you're trying things and I think it's more energetic. I think from a media perspective, we don't really have much of a media in, in this country. So um, it never really gets spoken about. And, and that's why I want to talk about Jade, um, who build their own carts for, for the long circuit, super cart stuff. They used to build a load of carts for TKM and other classes as well. But uh, now they're exclusively, in terms of their own manufacturing, it's all long circuit stuff. They, they now sort of run bureaus in the short circuit program but to me that kind of idea of building your own car and going racing yourself and that level of investment emotionally um is this is just more exciting so yeah i think i've said enough on my motivations um and, and why i want to do it um and now more to the challenges of the build what what do we have to do so as you can see here, this is the the. the uh, I, I well, you notice I put a sticker on the the uh, logo. I'm I'm not a big fan of paying for a vehicle and then that vehicle being a advertising uh, board for that manufacturer. Like you just paid them money. Why are you <laughs> putting all the, the your their logos on you? You know, you buy a Ferrari and have a little Ferrari badge. That's fine, but. Um, yeah, I mean, that's. There's anyone wondering why I'm doing that? It's because they don't pay me, and they don't pay you. You pay them. So um, the simplest way of I, I can probably start the build is is looking at the current stock of designs. Um, and anyone familiar with the chassis layout of an OTK will be aware that pretty much all chassis now. Have gone in that design direction. I don't think OTK, you know, were the first to come up with that kind of shape. Of you got the front bar here that, that you weld. I mean, I'll do some uh, close up to this, but you have 
you know, you've this bar here that's that's welded to the yoke, and then you have two outer bars and then a, a cross member here. It's basic, uh, but it's been around in kite for quite a long time. Um, and everybody's sort of gone in that direction design wise. So that's probably where I'll start out. Um, the complexity really is in bending the tubes to the right angle. So I need to get a tube bender. Uh, and that that's the initial the initial thing. Then you've got to notch the tubes to uh, you know fit nicely to each other before they're welded. So I don't know I, what I'll need help with, and this is where you guys come in. Um, because I've got no real fabrication experience, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm totally new to this. So I'll, there's mistakes that I'll, I'll, I will make. Is the jig, and that's going to be the hardest thing. Is is kind of having a welding jig. Some have some uh, some, some manufacturers who, who weld manually because uh, OTK have a robot welder, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, but they have a pivot so they can actually have the chassis and twist it around, you know, fully sort of on that sort of axis so they can weld and then flip it and weld it and that kind of stuff. Whereby I'm probably going to have to have a more simplistic option. I've seen some people have like a flat metal table and then they just literally, they might clone a chassis so they'll have like mounts that they sort of put where the, where their, their sort of their donor chassis is and, and then they'll put mounts the screw will weld the mounts to the to the actual table then fit whatever tubing they can the thing that's going to be real tricky is the yokes getting them set at the right angle the inclination for uh camber and and caster and all that kind of stuff and i'm not sure how yet to um have a jig where the yokes because the yokes have to be set solid Right, because that's your that's your most important geometry of the chassis. Um, so I'm not sure how to. Like I can I can easily imagine how to fabricate a jig for most of the flat parts. Um, it's just when it gets elevated and, and you got on the jig, that's going to be the tricky thing. So any advice for that about jigs, a cost-effective jig? Because here I've got to say I've got a very tight budget. Um, I probably don't have enough money at the moment to com to do it to complete it, but. I'm hoping that, um, I just found that we might have a tool that's going to help me. This is the garage, you see. There's stuff in here that I don't even know is in it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so if you know anything about jig construction on a very, very tight budget, um, please get in touch. Let me know because I want, like I don't mind people coming on and going, actually, Alan, you need to do it like this. This is how you should do it. I did it like this. Like I want as much of that as possible. And he's, if you can, in as clear uh description as possible because don't assume i know anything so yeah i'm thinking maybe do a rough sort of layout similar to the otk i've got here already and then transfer all of the pedals and the steering and the axle and brakes over to it um as a sort of the first initial test mule uh steel wise i'm not sure what the best route to go in um because otk run different grades of steel around the chassis it's not just one um steel tube spec um it's part of their part of their design is is what sort of stiffness each part of the chassis has so i've always felt i've always felt like chassis are the main setup component um you know people talk about setup and stuff and i always think uh, the chassis is the real component here um that actually dictates how quick a chassis is going to be i think um so that's how i see chassis construction i see it as like a chassis is the main setup component rather than you make a setup around the chassis it's actually the chassis itself that's important um so the tube bending uh i can get a simple tube bender uh, i'm hoping that'll give me enough kind of um options with regard to chassis chassis shapes and that kind of stuff the real tricky thing, I think, with the jig is these sort of upright components, like for the seat and um, for the uh, fuel tank and the, where you put the steering column. I think, um, yeah, that that's something that I need to, to look at. Um, 
But that's 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 as much advice I can get on that, the better. Uh, the the how how I'm gonna weld it, um, I've, I've thought about for a while, and I was looking at MIG options. That's sort of, they look rank. MIG welding looks horrible to me anyway. I think Tony Car uh, a robotic, robotically welded, and I think it's a TIG weld. Um, now the issue with TIG welding is is heat control. Um, so like if you get the if you're welding it and it gets the metal too hot, it can distort and affect the chassis in a negative way. Um, so and it and it can also cause uh, increase the chance of cracks. Like you'll notice that sometimes with, with modern carts, and I've seen it on OTK products. Though I'm not saying it's part of OTK products, but I have seen it where they'll crack around the yoke area. So I don't want any cracking. So I'm probably going to go with a brazing option, gas welding. Um, I know that, uh, and some people might think, is that going to be strong enough? But it is more than strong enough. Uh, brazing is generally the more accepted form of welding for racing uh, components because it's a lower temperature. So it causes less issues with um, causing any uh, brittleness to come into the, to the weld and less chance of sort of negatively I don't know if it's the words deforming but affecting the actual metal you're welding as to so brazing is probably the way I'm going to go I think that's what Jade do uh, and I've got there's a guy on YouTube that shows you how to how he welded a Moto2 chassis for Triumph and he uses brazing it's like it's the nuts so that's the route I'm going to go into and it's probably easier to learn like TIG it's just a lot of complexity that um, I just don't really have time for and my, my brain will just lose interest too quickly so that is we're probably going to go a brazing route um i think that's the best route forward now the next issue is your welding order um so like a lot of manufacturers they they they, they keep their secrets right you can't keep a secret of what the chassis design is but you can keep the, the secret rough well you can't even really keep a secret of, of what material you use because it can get analyzed and copied um but the but the only one really is the, the welding order. So how you like if you're if you, like anybody that's tightened up, you know, a head on an engine or, or, or whatever, you know that you, you don't really weld in a circular motion. You'll, you'll do like a pattern like that uh, to equalize the sort of stresses that you're putting on it. So it's very similar in, in terms of cart construction. Um, so it will be like which order to weld things in and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to consider. Um, and my aim is really to 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 be essentially the the OTK product. You know that's kind of my goal. Um, that's what I want to do, and I want to bring you on that journey. Um, but to be honest with you, if I get a cart constructed, that'll be a miracle. Because <laughs> like you know, if you know me, I've got a brain that loves new ideas, new projects. But actually sustaining them over the long term, um, I always struggle with. So I'm just going to take my time with this. Um, and yes you know we'll see how it goes and you can support the channel via patreon the links below and paypal if you, if you prefer, prepare you know if you prefer to donate i think like um any any help that that way is going to make the project easier and better and faster you know if you want to help us go faster please please support the channel because it makes a massive difference to how long the project's going to take so yeah body work uh, i've got some old, old body work from this uh from this cart which I'll probably use um, we're all going to be in test mule uh, status for quite a while so hopefully um, we can get something kind of cool done and you can all be part of it and then I, I want others you know it's boring doing it on my own please if you have an inclination to do something I know there's a couple of guys on Facebook that I've seen do garage builds over the isolation period and I'd like to encourage everyone you know try it because you never know you know, maybe we can break this North Italian monopoly on the construction of carts and, you know, we can start bringing it. I mean, I'd love to have a constructed series. How cool would that be? Imagine that little regulation that says you have to build your own carts like an F1 and not just buy something off the shelf. Um, yeah. So thank you for watching. I hope this video is not a big fanfare because I've got nothing at the moment. I've got no welding gear. I've got nothing. So hopefully I'll just keep you updated with the progress and let's aim for some big meeting next year. Maybe Cart Masters. I don't know. You know, uh, I've, I've looked through the regulations. I know what I've got to do. I know what I've got to do to win. So 
Um, let's aim for cart masters, and if not cart masters, let's let's go for another big meeting. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and please comment. You know, get involved. The more people comment, the better, because I need help. Because I can't do this on my own. <laughs> like I really can't. So if you've got any experience with welding, particularly brazing, got any experience with building a jig for a cart chassis, just just hook me up. I would like to have my own design eventually. I think the thing is, this is this is one thing before I go. All these little components, um, little mounting points and stuff, welding stuff like that. That's what I'm concerned about. Um, just those little things that that can become a bit of a pain in the ass to little bit fiddly because everything's got to be in the right place um that that sort of stuff I, I need advice with so thank you for watching hope you enjoy the journey we're going to be on it for a while because i ain't got anything else to do nowhere else to go so hopefully we can hit the track next year and yeah thank you for watching and yeah yeah let's uh let's get started